All right, thanks. Hi, good afternoon, everyone. I'm Chen Chen. So thank you for coming to my presentation today. I'm going to present part of my thesis work, and it's a study about the influence of cultural factors on trust in automation. So for this study, it's a three-year project, and it's funded by Air Force. But given the time limitation, I can only present part of uh, the work. So today, we're going to focus on the system reliability and the perceived workload. All right, so I guess after the first presentation, we all have some very well knowledge about what is automation. So in our study, you know, after rounds and rounds of data reviews, we categorize human trust in automation into three categories. So we believe the first one is related to the system-related factors. So according to the study from Lee and C in 2004, they identified the uh, trust uh, characteristics into three categories. The first one is performers, then would be process and purpose. So basically it's about, for the purpose, how, uh, what, the information, uh, how, what the automation is going to do, what the pur purpose of the automation, and how the automation, how the system is going to use my information, use my data. And last one, performance, how the outcome will be improved after using the automation. And the, tech, and the second one is the task-related uh, variable. Basically, it's the context. So uh, like the, uh, the task involve a risk or the system complexity. So how difficult it is to use the automated as might affect human trust uh, for the system. And the last one is human-related effect uh, variables. Uh, for this one, we focus on the cultural differences. For example, some of the populations, they might be more welcome to the new technology, and some of the populations might be more conservative for new technology. So after uh, doing uh, the detailed reviews, we find out there are some limitations for the current work. So for the trust in automation across cultures, most of the current work they are mainly suggestive or objective. So basically, the researchers, they run the meta-analysis and they retrieve some dominant factors without empirical validations. So that means most of the uh, models, they are suggestive, and they don't have a, you know, a very robust proof for that models. So even some you know, studies that provide some em em empirical data to validate the models, most of data, most of studies are conducted in Western countries like United States or like UK, Europe societies. So there's very little attention uh, allocated in the cultures like in East Asia or Middle East. So there's a reason why we want to conduct a study and focus on the cultural factors. So for our study, we try to integrate the following three factors, the system-related construct task-related variables, and human-related variables. So we try to integrate to combine all these three variables together. So all right, as I mentioned, this is a three-year project. So the overall, object, overall goal for this project is to figure out how the, uh, how the cultural differences might affect human trust in automation. So the very first step, we want to develop a reliable, a robust measures to help us to capture the cultural differences in various conditions. You know, you need to have a very reliable measures to help the researchers to capture the, the, the trust differences. Then we want to develop uh, simulators to help us to simulate all kinds of different conditions. So after, once we have the uh, measures and the systems, the simulators, then we can conduct the empirical studies. So for our study, we conduct the empirical studies in three different countries, United States and Taiwan and Turkey. So why these three countries? So the reason for picking up these three countries are based on two different cultural mechanisms. The first one is the most well-known Hofstede cultural dimensions. So we use three uh, variables from uh, Hofstede's cultural uh, theories, namely part distance, uncertainty avoidance, and individualisms. So let me briefly explain the, uh, the meaning of these three factors. The first one, part distance, this means the, uh, uh, the inequality in the society. So it means like in, an individual from the high power distance society, uh, he or she has to follow the seniors or manager's orders to do whatever he, he asks him to do. Okay, so this 
power distance. So like here, the Turkish culture has the highest power distance, and the United States has the lowest uh, power distance. So that means an individual from Turkish cultures, they most of the time they will follow the, obey the uh, request from the senior members. But for an individual from the United States, they probably think about it, you know, whether it's a fair enough or not. Okay. And the other one, uncertainty avoidance. So the tolerance for the un un unknown situations. For example, like if I ask you to use my service, an individual from the high and certain avoidance, like the Turkish people, they need to know very well about the systems to avoid any unclear situations. But on the contrary, for the, uh, for the individual from the United States, they don't need to use that much details. They will tr you know, they'll trust your service and use it anyway. At least, you know, the first time. And the last one, individualisms. So individuals from the a high score in the individualism, like United States, so they will focus more on the personal goals instead of the uh, group ach achievements. So I guess through these figures, you can see the fundamental differences among these three countries. So that's one of the reasons that we pick up these three countries. Uh, all right, the other uh, cultural mechanism, uh, uh, cultural uh, mechanisms we use is the uh, cultural syndromes. So for this one, it categorizes the cultural characteristics into three groups, namely uh, dignity, faith, and honors. All right, so for the dignity cultures uh, uh, often found in Western countries, like the United States, so an individual from the dignity cultures, they tend to have higher trust to others. So that means they will trust your service at the, you know, at the first time. So they tend to trust others, no matter it's people or your service or your systems. Unless, uh, until they find, you know, there is some bad thing happens, then we'll just uh, stop and just distrust uh, the service. And for the first cultures, uh, most found in East, uh, in East Asia, like Taiwan or Japan. For this one, so they valued, uh, uh, they, they valued the, the opinions from their peer members. So if someone from your group, the senior members, asks you to use the service or the systems, most of the time they obey their request and they use it anyway, no matter he likes it or not. And last one is Turkish. So it, uh, the un un other cultures, and most from the Middle East, so like Turkish. So due to the society situations, so people from these cultures, they have relatively lower trust to people or to systems. So they need to get some more details until they, until they know whether there's benefit, you know, better or not to use their, their service. So again, through, this, uh, uh, through the cultural syndromes, you will know the differences among these three countries. So the reason for picking up these three countries are based on these two uh, cultural mechanisms. All right, so for our studies, uh, we, run, uh, we run an empirical study in these three countries, and we recruit uh, the uh, student participants. So in each country, we re recruit 120 students for our studies. So in total, we recruit uh, 360 uh, participants. And to qualify the cultural characteristics, all the participants uh, have to attack the K-12 scoring in the presented countries. Because like, you know, like some of my, my friends, even they have the US citizenship, they may study in Taiwan and come to the United States after like, as for their graduate degree. For this kind of participants, they are not qualified for our study. Okay. So here is the uh, simulations. So yeah, it's kind of fancy, but let me briefly explain that. So basically, they have two main tasks for our study. Uh, the first one is the tar target detection task uh, in the top left, and the other one is the navigation task in the right hand side here. So for the target detection task, the uh, the operator, the participants, have to uh, fig figure out whether there is enemy target is within this photo or not. If they believe there is enemy target through the request here, if they believe there is enemy target within these photos, they want to click hit. Otherwise, they want to click save. For the navigation task, we use different icons to represent to represent different like. 
for the blue ones for the UAVs, and for, for the, uh, the red squares I represent the destinations. Well, for the, given the, the time limitation, today I'm going to, I will only show you Okay, we'll only show you the target detection task. Okay, so all the results are focusing on the target detection task. So for this one, we put, I don't trust the automation anymore, so I will use manually. <laughs> uh, so for this one, for the target detection task, we provide a tool we call tar target, target finders. So what do they do for the participants? Basically, we'll categorize the situation into three uh, states, red, yellow, and green, like traffic lights. In the red conditions, that means there is a high likelihood there is enemy target included in this photo. For the green ones, means there is a very low possibility there is an enemy target within this photo. And the funny thing is, for the yellow ones, we tell the participants, even the automation not sure about that. So there probably there is a target with this photo. So you better figure it out by yourself. And for our experimental conditions, we have two different levels of, of uh, automation reliabilities. The high level is 80%. The other low reliability is 20%. But only the yellow, yellow ones, the warning condition change between reliability conditions. No matter it's high or low reliability conditions, the red one and the green ones are the same, 80% correct. Okay, so only the yellow one changed. And to verify whether the participants uh, trust the provided as from the target finders or not, we provide a, key, a button check. So the when they first re uh, receive the photos, it will be like blur, blur one. But they can click check to get a the one with a better, better view. Uh, but to avoid the participants just keep clicking the check buttons to see all the photos, we provide a penalty. So once they click the check buttons, they need to wait for like three seconds so they can perceive the better pictures. So it is kind of a, you know, a manipulation check to, to verify whether the participants trust the provided as or not. Right, for the experimental design, so for the navigation task, we have four different uh, conditions. And this one will verify the information transparency, but it's not included in our presentation, so I'll skip that. For the reliability condition, as I mentioned, we have two different levels of reliability condition, 80% or 20%. But only the yellow one, the warning ones, will change. The red, red one and the green one, they won't change between the reliability conditions. And we also have two different uh, types of workload. So we manipulate the speed of the UAVs. So in the high text load, they will fly faster, and in low, low text load, they will fly slower. Instead of adding number of UAVs, we change the speed. All right, so I'll, I'm going to speed, speed up a little bit. So this basically is a flow. So best, the participant will first fill out their initial trust before experiencing any conditions. And after that, they will take the training session and real task, either high or low text load conditions. So after experiencing one of the conditions, they'll fill out another uh, uh, trust questionnaire and go back here and to take another condition. So it's a basic flow. So for the measurement, the first one before the experiment, they will take the general trust questionnaire. And after rounds of data collection and validation, so with the items measure these three uh, construct, performers, process, and task context. And after they experience in the, uh, the experimental conditions, they will take another uh, questionnaire to measure the performer's process and purpose. All right, so for the general trust in automations, before they experience anything, what's the difference? We found out that US participants, the one from the uh, technical cultures, they have the highest general trust among these three countries. And the Turkish, the uh, under culture, they have the lowest trust. And the face cultures, town is kind of in between. And this result uh, also supported by the uh, cultural syndromes. 
when we change the text load, how did the participants perceive? Or right, again, so similar as the, the result we, we observe in the general trust. So US participants and Chinese participants, they have a higher trust than the Turkish participants. And these two groups have, uh, these two groups have no significant differences between the US and Taiwanese group. And for the Turkish group, the other culture and Taiwanese group, face cultures, they have higher trust in the high workload conditions than the low workload conditions. How about reliability? We have two different level of reliabilities. All right, again, so US and Taiwanese participants, they have a higher trust than the Turkish uh, participants. And you know, when you decrease reliability, not surprised, you know, they have high, lower trust. Give one more minute. Almost done. For the chicken behavior, you know, they can click the check button, right? And to, to see like whether they trust the ad or not. What we found is the face culture, Taiwanese group, dignity culture, US group, they have higher checking behavior than the Turkish people. And the Turkish people, they have relatively low checking behaviors, especially for these ones, the warning conditions. These ones, we tell the participants, even the automation cannot figure out whether there is enemy or not. So for this one, the US group and Tony's group, they have higher frequency to check, to, to hit the checks button, but not the Turkish in participants. So this result in the overall effect. And in general, Tony's group, they have the uh, highest uh, tendency to, to click the check buttons, especially in the uh, high reliability conditions. As you can see in here, there is no significant differences among these three cultures. But you know, there's a huge difference between the Taiwanese group and US group, and Turkish group and Taiwanese group. So in the high, work, high reliability conditions, Taiwanese group, still they tend to check uh, the photos to verify whether there's enemy target or not. All right, I'm going to jump to the conclusions. So for the general trust, what we got is you know, pretty uh, similar to what we, uh, what the conclusion from the cultural syndromes. So US group has highest ones, and Turkish people have lowest ones, and Taiwanese group has kind of in the, in the between. And also we also find out in the general trust, the first cultures, they have lowest trust in the task context. So that might suggest you know, they, they believe, they, they still think automation can help them to improve their performance but somehow they might fit all kinds of conditions. So that's why probably they have, that's one of the reasons to explain why they have lowest trust in the test context. And what contribute to their initial trust? For the dignity cultures, the, the US group, they value the process most than the performance and task. For the uh, Turkish group, the other cultures, they emphasize performance more than the task or uh, the process. For the first cultures, Taiwanese group, they value both performance and process. All right, when you increase tax load, somebody increase their trust in automation. So they tend to use the, automa the, the provided automations. And when, again, when you uh, increase the reliability, they will trust the automation more. It's not a surprise. And the last one, I will skip this one. For this one, you know, we find out Turkish group, somehow they have the lowest trust, no matter it's initial trust or specific trust after experiencing the experimental conditions. But this, they also have like low checking behaviors. So it's kind of interesting. So they don't trust it, but they don't check it either. Okay. So that could be, you know, maybe their lower initial trust leads them to have this kind of uh, inappropriate collaboration behaviors. That could be one of the reasons, you know, there are lots of different reasons. We still figure it out. Yeah. So I don't think I have enough time, right? So we upload all the empirical data, questionnaires and simulators in the ICPSR. So we will have any collaboration opportunities. Yeah. So thanks. Sorry about let's, delay. Let's thank James. <laughs> Uh, 
Uh, hi, I'm Theo Manatees from Cambridge University. Uh, if you can please go back to your sample slide. Which, which slides? So the one we had, the 120 participants for each country. Okay. So um, throughout your presentation, you mentioned that um, Turkey had lowest trust ratings. Mm -hmm. And your samples are not balanced. Yeah. They're like 40 women, uh, male, 80 female in United States and Taiwan, but they're different in Turkey. Basically, is there a gender difference? gender difference? And have you included that in your analysis? You know, we, we didn't mean to do so, to have this kind of sample, like 40, 80, or like 25, 95. Uh, I don't have the, the results regarding gender differences in my hand right now, but I, I, think I can definitely pull it out for you later. Yeah. Uh, it just, just to confirm that your results showing Turkey to be less trusting mm -hmm. is not because of a gender difference? No, I, I don't think it's, it's related from gender differences. No. Okay. And but also, I, I forgot to mention, all the questionnaires and the simulators are translated to the native language. So like we translate the English to Taiwanese or Turkish when we conduct the empirical studies so to make sure they understand what the information is provided from the simulation. Yeah. No, th thank you. It, it's, just, it's a great presentation. Just I want to make sure that this is not the reason why you're in. I think perhaps a, a bit of an explanation yeah, yeah. somewhere yeah. would have helped with that understanding. Yeah, we, we currently we analyze the, probably the, the gaming experience could be one of the reasons to affect their trust information, but we still don't know yet. Like in, in general, male, you know, male has like higher game experience. That could be one of the reasons leading to the lower trust in trash group, mm -hmm. but we don't know yet. Yeah, that could be game experience or like pure like gender differences. Yeah. So yeah, we will figure out. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much. Sure. Thanks.